Hey everybody, welcome back. So today we're going to talk about Friday Facts 384, which is Combinators 2.0. Uh, I am really excited about this one. Uh, this is a lot of really cool stuff. So first we have some user interface changes. The The first main one here is, is that the UI now for networks and, you know, like a train stop or anything always shows now, even if there is no network connected, which is awesome because you can at least see what options you have for planning purposes. And that might seem silly. If you're new, it's super useful, but it's even useful for people like me that don't have a great memory when you're, <laughs> you know, 500 hours in and you still don't remember what your options are here. Next up is that when you pick a signal for a condition, it shows you the amount that is currently present on that network, which is super useful because <laughs> I am constantly going and trying to figure out what to hover my mouse over in order to see what the current state of the signals is. And this is awesome. All right. So now we get into the real substance of this Friday facts, which is Decider Combinator 2.0. This thing is awesome. So the first biggest thing that you can do is you can do nested conditions now in Decider Combinator. So you can have basically Boolean expressions, right? I don't know how nested they can be. Uh, I don't know if there's any limit there. It looks like there might be a limit of one or two deep. I can't tell, but it's even if it's just that much, even if you get an and and an or and one of them is nested, that's massively powerful. There are so many more things that you can express with one decider now, especially because now it supports both the red and the green network at the same time, and you can choose what you read it from. In addition to that, if you look along the bottom there, you now have both your input signals and current output signals, which is awesome for debugging, for, you know, just sanity checking, like, am I on the right network, so on and so forth. You can have multiple outputs now, which is awesome. Like, it's not just one output anymore. That's a big deal. I will say one little thing that I noticed there that it doesn't look like you can do right now. So you still have only a choice of one or input count on the output. I kind of wish they would give you an arbitrary constant. I think that would be nice. So if I could just say, hey, could that please be five on red circuits? If this condition is met, that that would be cool. Uh, I am pretty sure that will come in useful, uh, especially for certain computing situations. And then the last thing, uh, and I'm sure there's some stuff that's being overlooked here that they haven't shown us yet. But at the bottom here, you have a description that you can add. And if you add the description, it's like a comment in code. I believe it shows in the tooltip when you hover over it, and it definitely shows in this screen. And that's just awesome. So in a blueprint, you no longer have to sort of either remember or document separately what your various combinators are for. You can just type a comment there, which is very akin to, you know, comments in code and extremely useful. So this is without any question going to completely change the way that people build computers, custom displays, both the ones that are belt driven, the ones that use lamps, whatever. Everything is gonna be completely modified by this. It kind of, to me, is comparable to going from, you know, like a, a logic gate chip, like a 74 LS series chip, to something more like, a more complex logic circuit, like a full adder or something along those lines, which I just remembered also exists as a 74 LS chip itself, but it's a higher number. And to me, it's not the same thing. Next up, we have the arithmetic combinator. It has a side-by-side -side view now, so you can see both the input and output signals, their current state, uh, a lot more readable than the current state of things for the arithmetic combinator. And then, oh baby, we get into the the biggest part of this whole thing and probably the one new addition that I'm the most excited about outside of, you know, space in general being added, which is the selector combinator. This thing is basically, um, I would say some pretty limited programming, uh, type functions that you can execute, uh, kind of reminds me of a language called, took me a minute. It's called ML or standard ML. I am not a fan of ML. I've used it before. It's a functional programming language that has some pretty limited operations on arrays. I don't know the extent of it I because I started avoiding it once I learned about the basics and went to other real programming languages, you know, like um, COBOL and Fortran. 
the selector combinator is reminiscent of a limited functional language like this. It lets you pick, actually it's more powerful than ML because you can pick any index out of an array. You can sort the array ascending or descending beforehand. So this lets you, for instance, say, pick the item that there are the most of in a given chest or in a given network or something like that, or that we need the most of and prioritize that. You could use this, that right there, that select input function, you could use that to decide, okay, I'm going to send a rocket. The next one's going to be, I don't know, green circuits, because that's what we have the most demand for. Uh, you can count the inputs, which just would tell you the unique number of signals in it. You can pick a random input and set what the update interval is, which is seems very powerful. I'm not sure what I might use it for uh, other than fun, uh, you know, maybe doing something silly. Uh, you could probably use that with a constant combinator to um, make like static or something like that on a on a display, that sort of thing. Uh, I'm guessing it's not a cryptographically secure random, but maybe it is. Um, stack size, I'm confused about this one because it says output the stack size of the input item. I don't see on this where it you get to specify the input item unless it shows you that once you select stack size. Maybe if you select stack size there, you know, you get to pick a signal, you pick green circuits, and then it, you know, the that would be 200 uh, would be the stack size for that. Next up is rocket capacity, which I have the same question about. Again, it mentions the input item. I don't really understand this. It's got to be basically what I just said about stack size. But instead of the stack size of the item, it's the the amount that a rocket could fit of that item, I think. And I don't know if rocket capacity changes with research or anything like that or if it's constant. And then there's one last one, which is transfer quality signal. I don't really know what that is. They say that they're going to tell us more about that. I'm guessing that there's some new shenanigans with signals and quality that they're just starting to hint at here now. So yeah, so far, this is probably the one that I am the most excited about. I still kind of wish we could actually program in this in this game. And when I say that, of course, you can build, you know, an 8-bit computer from scratch out of combinators today if you want to. And then you could go and build RAM or or ROM rather and, you know, put a program in that which would be extremely tedious. It would be nice if at least it was possible to mod in some very low level programming to kind of be in the spirit of the game where <laughs> uh very few bits worth of logic consume a great deal of storage it would be pretty cool to me to be able to make a computer block that was large and only had i don't know maybe somewhere between 10 and 100 hertz worth of clock speed and then you could use that to control things like your rocket launches and stuff and it'd be somewhat reminiscent of like the moon missions so i think that's everything very exciting going to very much change a lot of parts of this game. I think this is just in 2.0. I don't think you have to buy the DLC to get this. So thank you so much for tuning in. If you enjoyed this video, found it informative, please feel free to like, comment, and or subscribe. Any of those things help the channel a lot. They mean a lot to me and encourage me to make more videos if you find them useful. You can also join our Discord. There's a link in the description. We've been known to do an occasional live stream lately and have some fun in real time. So feel free to come by. And otherwise, we'll see you next time. Have a good day, everybody. Bye.